Hundreds of thousands of years ago, humanity experienced a population bottleneck that lasted more than 100,000 years. Only the strongest, fastest, most intelligent and adaptable humans survived this bottleneck and passed on their genes. Far from stooped over primitive savages, our forefathers and cousins would have been superior athletes with muscular physiques, fast sprinters with strong throwing arms who could compete with the best Olympic athletes. New research on ancient man has revealed surprising insights into genetics that contradict popular beliefs about evolution. The image of the Neanderthal as a squat, chiseled brute is sometimes overstated, but Neanderthals definitely possess strong, muscular bodies and wide hips and shoulders. The density of their bones, the width of their pelvis, and the thick areas of muscle attachment indicate that they were a very muscular group. In recent years, there has been a significant increase in the number of known genomic variants associated with endurance or power and strength athletes. This has resulted in a better understanding of the genes that affect athletic performance in ancient humans. The availability of multiple Neanderthal nuclear genomes raises the possibility that these data will shed light on the hypothesis that Neanderthals were capable of burst speed and power running, which is currently associated with elite sprinters. Remarkably, Neanderthal genomes contain a greater number of gene variants associated with power sports performance than living humans. Furthermore, bones of ancient man were up to twice as thick as modern man, and if the attachment points for muscles were any indication, they were extremely strong. Skeletal and genetic studies prove that ancient man would have been a formidable opponent, spending their lives consuming massive amounts of red meat and protein-rich bone marrow. For example, the Neanderthal build is more muscular than lean, making it more suitable for power sprinting than endurance running. Researchers looked at genetic variants that previous studies had found to be more common in elite power or sprint athletes. They discovered that the majority of these power-related genetic variants were more common in Neanderthals than in modern humans, who are known to be more endurance-adapted due to their generally more slender builds. Indeed, anatomical evidence suggests ancient humans such as Neanderthals were much stronger than modern humans. Teamwork was also vital for our success in hunting, as it is today in sports. Surprisingly, anthropologists once believed that Neanderthals were poor runners and throwers, lacking the skeletal adaptations to run quickly or throw with force. These old studies, which relied on very little fossil evidence, concluded that their feet were not designed for running, and their shoulders and hands were not structurally adapted to throw a spear with power and accuracy. To investigate this further, Researchers examined genetic variants previously associated with elite power or sprint athletes. The researchers discovered that the majority of these power-related genetic variants were much more common in Neanderthals than in humans today. Now, researchers have discovered 39 power-associated gene variants in modern humans and Neanderthals. They found that the majority of the power-associated genetic variants are more common among Neanderthals than among modern humans. This is consistent with power phenotypes being more common in Neanderthals than in modern humans. What's more, it is possible that Neanderthals possessed even more genes associated with power or endurance locomotion that are not found in modern human populations. Moreover, Neanderthal genomes carry a higher proportion of gene variants associated with power sports performance than living humans. Therefore, a Neanderthal would have a clear power advantage over his Homo sapiens opponent. Many of the Neanderthals archaeologists have recovered had huge forearms, possibly the result of a life spent stabbing woolly mammoths and straight-tusked elephants to death and dismantling their carcasses. Remarkably, their muscles were so strong that their forearm bones were actually bent from the force exerted. In fact, the remains of a 50,000-year-old Russian Neanderthal suggest that Neanderthals were heavily pumped up on male hormones, possessing a hormonal status unlike anything seen in humans today, according to a recent paper. Furthermore, Neanderthals had a larger pelvis and a lower center of gravity than Homo sapiens, making them formidable grapplers. Neanderthals also built up strong trapezius, deltoid, and triceps muscles by dragging 100 pounds of meat 25 miles to their caves, often up steep mountain sides.
The study concluded that Neanderthals most likely evolved their muscular physiques as a result of lifestyle, genes, climate, and diet. Neanderthal males hunted in the extreme, which helped to strengthen their arms. Neanderthal males would engage in face-to-face -face contact, jabbing long, thick spears directly into the animal's flesh, instead of shooting prey, such as mammoths, from a distance. This is expected, as Neanderthals were generally heavier and more muscular than modern humans. People that live in cold climates also tend to have larger brains than those living in warm climates. However, ancient man cannot be compared to modern hunter-gatherers who hunt deer with a bow and arrow rather than engaging in confrontational hunting. Regardless of sex, Neanderthal muscle mass is predicted to have been absolutely higher than recent hunter-gatherers. Compared to anatomically modern humans, both male and female Neanderthals had a larger muscle mass and experienced higher loading on the upper extremity than did Homo sapiens. Also, they differed from modern humans by a greater functional difference between the sexes. Nevertheless, Neanderthal males had huge right arms, while Neanderthal females had arms that were more evenly matched and not nearly as muscular. The tallest Neanderthal on record is the Levantine Neanderthal known as Amud I, with an estimated height of 180 centimetres, 5 feet 9 inches, an estimated body mass of 75 kilograms, around 165 pounds, and a massive brain capacity of 1,740 cubic centimetres. The French Neanderthal, known as La Ferrassie I, is the largest specimen with a brain size of 1,680 cubic centimetres, an estimated height of around 172 centimetres, 5 feet 6.5 inches, and a body mass of 85 kilograms, around 185 pounds. This contradicts the stereotype that Neanderthals were all short-statured. Body mass is calculated using a formula based on bone length and circumference, and Neanderthaloid humans had huge bones. In one study, estimates from 26 Neanderthal specimens found an average weight of 78 to 83 kilograms, 170 to 183 pounds, for males. And for females, the average was 63 to 66 kilograms, 139 to 146 pounds, suggesting a considerably higher average body mass than modern and ancient Homo sapiens. Neanderthaloid females were no delicate creatures either. The largest female Neanderthal specimen ever discovered, found at Grotte du Prince near the French Riviera from around 100,000 years ago, has an estimated body mass of 74 kilograms. 163 pounds. The Chinese Jin Yushan specimen has a body mass estimated to be around 78.5 kilograms, 173 pounds, making her the largest female specimen in the fossil record, and she would have been a terror in the shot put. Researchers hypothesized that the highly muscular Neanderthaloid body form reflects an adaptation to woodland hunting conditions rather than cold weather. And in a new paper, paleoecological evidence shows that they live primarily in woodlands and genetic analyses support this new hypothesis. The glacial adaptation hypothesis is the most widely accepted explanation for Neanderthal body form. Nevertheless, paleoecological associations appear to point to a less cold woodland environment. Under such conditions, encounter and ambush hunting would have been preferred over pursuit hunting, resulting in greater muscular power and sprinting speed rather than endurance capacity. One reason researchers believe Neanderthals lived in a cold climate is that their remains were discovered alongside those of Ice Age mammals, such as mammoths, woolly rhinos, horses and reindeer. Some researchers argue that their physical characteristics, particularly short limbs, a large nasal cavity and a large torso, were evolutionary adaptations to living in cold climates. But hunting in the woods typically requires speed and acceleration rather than long-distance running. This is because encountering prey behind trees can be unexpected and require a quick response. In contrast, modern humans' endurance running is better suited for pursuit hunting in open grassland environments. Based on the new woodland theory, Researchers hypothesized that Neanderthals were better suited to sprinting than distance running. The hypothesis that Neanderthals were built for speed provides us with a new perspective on their body form.
Long-distance runners tend to be lean and have long limbs, whereas short-distance runners are much more muscular and may have shorter limbs in proportion to their overall body size. So it's now clear that the Neanderthal build resembles sprinters rather than long-distance runners. According to scientists, Neanderthals exhibited a pronounced androgenic phenotype, indicating a high level of male hormones. According to the researchers, Neanderthals exhibited unique biomechanical adaptations and a distinct hormonal condition that does not closely resemble any hormonal conditions found in modern humans, whether normal or pathological. This condition may have developed due to genetic inheritance, living in a frequently cold northern climate and consuming a predominantly meat-based diet. The cold adaptation hypothesis is the most common explanation for Neanderthal body form. In fact, paleoecological data suggests a less cold woodland environment. Under such conditions, encounter and ambush hunting would have been preferred, resulting in greater muscular power and sprint capacity over endurance. The highly muscular body form of Neanderthals is thought to be an adaptation to woodland hunting conditions rather than cold. This hypothesis is supported by paleoecological evidence and preliminary genetic analyses, which show that they primarily lived in woodland environments. What's more, Neanderthals seem to suffer a high frequency of bone fractures. This frequency of such injuries is comparable to that of modern rodeo professionals and suggests frequent contact with large, combative mammals. The pattern of fractures, along with the absence of throwing weapons, suggests that Neanderthals may have hunted by leaping onto their prey and stabbing or even wrestling it to the ground. Instead of shooting prey, such as mammoths with a bow and arrow from a safe distance, Neanderthal males would engage in face-to-face -face contact, jabbing long, thick spears directly into the animal's flesh. Long-range projectile weaponry, as used by early modern humans, would have greatly reduced the need for upper body strength in hunting success. Neanderthal postcranial skeletons are generally robust, indicating that the body was well adapted to generate and withstand large forces. A comparison of the size of muscle attachment sites and mechanical advantage, or leverage, in the upper limbs of Neanderthals, early modern humans, and recent human samples reveals that the Neanderthals had significantly greater upper body strength than most modern humans. Upper body strength was most likely important for hunting success in the context of close-range hunting with hand-delivered weapons, and greater strength increased the diversity of prey species that the Neanderthals could hunt. Homo sapiens from the tropics have a longer legs on average than Neanderthals did, and more endurance. Most importantly, we could deploy these advantages to maximum effect using our superior intelligence. It's obviously speculative. But a modern man of above-average build would have an excellent chance of defeating a Neanderthal in a long-distance race, if he could keep survive the Neanderthal's initial burst of speed and wear him down. But in a short sprint, the Neanderthal may have the advantage, and their animalistic ferocity would also give them an edge. The endurance running hypothesis is a set of hypotheses that assume humans evolved anatomical and physiological adaptations to run long distances and, more specifically, that running is the only known behavior that would account for the different body plans in humans, as opposed to apes. No primates other than humans can run for an extended period of time. Forensic anthropology suggests that anatomical features that directly contributed to endurance running abilities were heavily selected for within the human genus as early as two million years ago. As a result, evolution of anatomical features that allowed for endurance running significantly altered the ancient human body. The modern human anatomy is designed for running, with tendons and ligaments in the legs and feet acting as springs and skull features that help prevent overheating. Paleontologists investigating the evolution of the human skull also propose that certain adaptations to the skull and neck are correlational evidence of traits selected for endurance running optimization. The hypothesis claims that adaptations such as a flatter face and the development of the neutral ligament in the back of the skull promote better head balance and cranial stabilization during long periods of running. According to the study, Traits such as longer lower legs and larger joints indicate that our human ancestors ran long distances at least two million years ago. 
The endurance running theory contends that humans evolved these distinct characteristics as a means of hunting down prey. Skeptics argue that running would have required far more energy than simply walking. Researchers acknowledge that running requires more energy, but this cost is largely offset by the amount of time saved. The researchers used modeling to show that the energy gained from successfully hunted prey outweighed the energy expended while running. In fact, the ability to run and throw was likely a driving force behind the evolution of our species. And with that statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other videos. Thank you and take care.